we got more questions. We have anonymous attendee. So when it comes to stretching the dollar, which is what we were discussing earlier, how are some ways you strategically do this with the increasing labor costs with trade shows? Specifically, I'm finding that even when we try to pull back, there's huge increases year over year. So I'll let one of you take this. I would say anonymous attendee, I do believe in exactly what you're asking for here, that this is something that companies like mine, exhibit houses, your partner is somebody where you test your partnership, right? This is where you're going to them. And it's not the cat and mouse of the budget. It's not the cat and the mouse of give me the best design for this or them holding things. And, you know, it's saying, Hey, we need to reduce. We want to exhibit, we need to reduce, we need to get results. And it's when you start really partnering to say, how are we going to do this, right? Is everybody okay with you going from a 30 by 30 and $200,000 spend down to something different? Will somebody step up and help you and have that conversation or will they not? And I think that is one of the first places that I think you should start just coming from my perspective, but I'll let uh, either Tavar, Nancy or John go. Nancy? Yeah, and I, I can speak to that a little bit. I mean, you know, the, the best advice that I can offer is to control what you can control. You're not going to control material handling or AV or rigging. You're just not going to be able to negotiate those things. So really look to see what, what you can control. Is there something on Amazon that you can order for $25 to hang bags on in your booth versus renting a bag stand for $300? You know, we were in Nashville in September and you know, an in-house AV provider wanted to charge us $10,000 to put power strips in meeting rooms. $10,000. Power strips are $11.24 because I'm very familiar with that oh, price. I looked it up. So, you know, we're not going to pay $10,000 for something that we could spend, you know, 400 on or, or what have you. So don't just take things at face value. Look to see what the alternative is because there's almost always an, an alternative out there. Challenge your vendors too like yeah. uh, I've done it multiple times where they'll give me a price for something and I'll go on Amazon and I'll find it for significantly less and I'll mm -hmm. I'll send it to them and be like listen guys I understand a little bit of a of a price increase but this is ridiculous either you do right by me or I'll just go get right. it on my own so I think it's you, you got to kind of stock it to the vendors as well because some of them do get a little out of hand and I was going to just add to that. So I attended the SEMA Summit, the Corporate Event Marketing Association. It took place in Salt Lake City, Utah in, in August. One of the things that they they announced at the event was they're, they're starting this initiative where they're trying to aggregate all of the, you know, what what did you pay for for this at this venue? And they're trying to aggregate all of the, the documents that we as event marketers can have a repository and say, okay, I'm being charged this, but this event that just took place last week twenty thousand dollars less and so we're trying to have this open source of data that we can really streamline and so if tavar or nancy go to this event and i've been there and, and they're scrubbing all of the data so it's not not proprietary but it's a way for us to be able to say okay i'm going to plan this event in orlando or las vegas here are the hotels here's what would be material handling or electricity so that we have that way that we can then to tavar's point arm ourselves to go back and say hey this is not actual, you know, what we should be paying. It, it, it should mm -hmm. be in this. So just over communication and really kind of finding the tribe where to the, to the question, you know, here's what we can do as event marketers. We're trying to make sure that we are kind of all having a level playing field. Cause we know when we go to these venues, we're being nickel and dimed and really just having that ability to have that. So it was, it, I'll share that with you, uh, Matt, but just a way for us to kind of yeah. have that open communication. John, it's an excellent point, right? And we had Peggy Ferguson ask, can we get access to the data John just mentioned? So John, I don't know, is that data, I assume that SEMA is building that data to create benchmarks at this yep. point, it's not built yet. But here's, here's what this did make me think. What it did make me think is part of the reason that we started this show, however, a year and whatever ago was... I don't feel like there's ever, there really is a community or lines open for event marketers, or at least for our customers that we had spoke to. So I would encourage people, if you were on this call, if you are an event marketer, reach out to each other on LinkedIn, right? That's what it's there for. And if you have an event in Orlando, if you have an event, I mean, we were just talking for a while before we came on about Nashville. It seems that everybody's been to Nashville. You know, the, we're talking about the facilities and stuff. Reach out and ask because- I can tell you this, 
there is stupid stuff, $10,000 for electrical strips and things like that, right? Like there is things like that going on. And if you need to double check yourself, if you have a circle of two or three, four people, maybe they can connect you with another person that said, hey, they just did an event there. They just did a trade show at this hotel at this hall. So I would say that's something that rang my bell, John, when you were saying that, because hopefully when SEMA and just for the chat, I see it's C-E-M, it's C-E-M-A, yep. not S-E-M-A. Hopefully that benchmarking data comes out and helps all. I think it's a brilliant idea of what they're doing. And for the record, we don't want to have to do that that haggling of pricing and throwing no. prices in front. We don't want to have to do that. So it's it's so much better when the vendors just do right by us and understand that we, we can't afford to pay such astronomical prices for things that are not worth it.